Hi kids, you're watching the Photoshop Workbench. I'm Mark Johnson. In today's Workbench, we'll transform a paint splatter photo into a custom brush, which we'll use to paint a rich textured border effect. You can find beautiful paint splatter photos like the one that I'm going to use on stock image sites such as Shutterstock, or you can paint one of your own. My splatter photo is courtesy of the talented and generous Lisa Carney. To impart a painterly appearance to our scene, we'll also work with a texture from the French Kiss Crackleur collection. Receive 15% off any of the French Kiss collections by visiting my discounts page and clicking through the French Kiss graphic. Be sure to enter the discount code MarkSJ15 during checkout, and that's all caps. All right, let's get started with this awesome project. Okay, so I have an image here of a geisha from the Atom conference that was hosted by Adobe's Russell Brown. Uh, there were some beautiful models there. This one was absolutely breathtaking. And as you can see, I have selected the subject and I have added a mask to the subject. Now, if you want specific directions on how to do that, be sure to check out Photoshop Workbench 331. It's called Compositing Selections Elevated. I'll tell you all about how to make a selection and add the mask. We're already at that point right now. So the next thing we want to do is add a solid color fill layer below the subject. So I'm going to come down here and click right here and choose solid color. You can also go up to the layer menu and choose new fill layer solid color. Either approach works. All right. Now, for now, go ahead and leave the color set to black, or if it's not black, set it to black and press OK. We're going to move this color fill layer below the subject layer, so I'm going to click and drag down just like this. And if you selected the subject and added a mask, you'll be able to do that. If your subject doesn't have a mask, and it's still a background layer, then you're going to have to turn it into a regular layer before you can move something below it. And to do that, you can simply double click on the layer name, which will be background. And when the dialog pops up asking you if you want to rename it, just click OK and you'll have a layer that can then be repositioned in the layer stack. All right, so we have our color fill layer. I'm going to go back up to the geisha layer here and click on that. Now I want to import a texture. This is where we're going to go find the texture from the French Kiss Crackleur collection. I love this collection. It's a very small one, but the <laughs> textures in it are awesome. I mean, you can see here, if you look at this, I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic. So anyway, we're going to take this texture. I'm going to activate the Move tool here, hold the Shift key, and then drag it right on over into the destination image, just like that. Now, if you're working um, with tabs, in Photoshop, rather than the view that I'm working with right here, you actually have to drag that texture up to the tab of the destination file, the subject file, and then back down to the subject file. So while you're holding shift, you drag it up to the tab and then back down and then let go. All right, so there it is. Now, what I want to do is scale this a little bit. No problem scaling a texture a little bit. So I'll choose Edit, Free Transform, and then I'm going to hold Option on the Mac, Alt on the PC, and drag this handle until it snaps to the top. Still holding Option or Alt, and I'll drag this one until it sna snaps to the right and left there. I'll tap Return on the Mac and Enter on the PC. All right, so there's my texture sitting on top. All the pieces are coming together here to make something that's going to look really cool. All right, so we want to add a ma mask to this texture, so we'll click on the front-loading washing machine icon right here, and we have our mask. Now we want to open up the paint splatter file. Again, you can get this from a stock photo site such as Shutterstock where they have some really great prices. Um, or you could, heck, just pull out a white sheet of paper and splatter some black paint on it. Um, in this case, mine comes from Lisa Carney. And thank you for that, Lisa. So now, um, ideally, you're going to be working with black paint on white paper. But if you happen to be working with colored paint on white paper, then you want to make sure to turn your paint to black. So to do that, you would choose Image, Adjustments, and then just choose Black and White. And then you can actually cycle through these presets uh, until you have the right looking black paint. In my case, I'm all set right here. 
the way things work when you're defining a brush, um, black areas will be completely opaque. Transparent areas here like this, semi-transparent areas will be semi-transparent and white areas will be completely transparent. So black is going to be opaque, okay? White's going to be fully transparent and anything in between is going to be some level of transparent. All right? So uh, again, even if you were working with say white paint splattered on black paper, you'd want to invert it so that you have something like this, black on white. All right, now that we have this, we're going to choose Edit, Define Brush Preset. And we'll go ahead and leave the name that's right there. You could name it something more descriptive, descriptive if you wanted to. All right. Now we're going to use this to paint a hole in this mask and reveal what's below. Actually, I should say paint a hole um, using the mask on this texture to reveal what's below. So I'm going to go activate the brush tool, pop over here into the brush panel, which is available alphabetically under the window menu. I'm going to go find the brush I just defined. In fact, I can find it a little easier over here. There it is. There's my brush right there. Okay? That just helped me find it. Now over here is where I'm going to customize it because if I start to paint right now, you'll notice not very exciting. It doesn't really look like paint splatter. All right. So in order to accomplish that, we need to come in here to Shape Dynamics. And we need to change some of the characteristics of our brush. So I'm going to go to Size Jitter, and I'm going to play around with this until I start to see a look that I think I might like. And I can just paint over here. Still not that exciting. All right. So we have to do some more. Um, I am working with a Wacom tablet, which I'm learning to love. Uh, but since many of you aren't, um, I won't go into the Wacom tablet yet. I'm going to set this back to off which is just working with a mouse here. All right, now I'm going to come down here to Angle Jitter, and this is going to spin the brush as I paint with it. See how it's moving below? So that starts to get a little bit more interesting. All right, then I want to go over here to Transfer, and in this region, I want to play around with the Opacity Jitter. This is going to make some strokes more opaque than others. All right, it's really starting to get interesting at this point. I want to make the brush a little bit bigger by tapping the right bracket key. And you'll see, when I, when I just tap down right there, it's like I'm getting a paint splatter. And it's varying the rotation. It's varying the opacity. So I can sit here and I can just sort of tap around my picture. Or if I want to take a little faster approach for the sake of this workbench, I'm just going to go ahead and paint like this. So I'm picking up the pen from time to time, or letting off the mouse from time to time. But you see how we're getting this beautiful splatter effect? It's knocking a hole through the texture to reveal both the geisha below and also the, uh, the black of the solid color fill layer. All right, I'm gonna make it a little smaller. I'm gonna go in here, I wanna make sure that in regions like this, that I have exactly what I want. Oops, I just tapped the wrong key there. There we go. Make sure I reveal the hand. See how you're getting this wonderful effect? I make it a little bit bigger and I can just sort of tap out here maybe. I'm gonna make it a lot bigger actually. I'm using that right bracket key. There we go kind of want to just have a little bit of splattering that's happening out in these regions here. It's not always going to work, so I keep one hand on Command Z or Control Z at all times and I undo a lot, so I'll paint and then I'll undo. As you can see, you could be in here forever trying to get this to look exactly the way you want it to look. I'm pretty happy with this. It's, it's fast, quick and dirty, but I'm still looking pretty good. By the way, if you come up with a brush that you absolutely love, so you've gone into shape dynamics and transfer and maybe some other um, characteristics of the brush here and you've modified these and you want to store these so you can use them in the future, you can come over here where you see the brush icon, click on this inverted triangle, come out here to this flyout menu and choose new tool preset and you can see in here I, I defined a paint splatter brush when I was practicing this technique and that will actually store it as a tool preset if you want to get back to it you just click right here scroll through your list and you can find all of your custom brushes that you've defined there um, actually not just brushes 
all of your tools. All right, so um, this is looking pretty good. I do want to do a few more things to it. Uh, first of all, the texture is not looking rich enough right now. So we're going to clip a curves or levels adjustment layer into here that's set to multiply mode. So I'll go into the adjustments panel, which you can find alphabetically listed under window. Okay, and I'm going to hold down option when I click here on curves. It's going to bring up this new layer dialog and I want to clip this into the texture layer that's currently active and I want to change the mode to multiply to build density. And you can see how that added some real richness to the texture. It's looking a whole lot better at this point. I also think I want to play around with just the overall mid-tone contrast of the scene. So I'll go into adjustments, add another curve, I'm going to play around with this. This is highlights with detail. I can just sort of drag up to brighten a little bit. And this is shadows with detail. And I can drag up or down to play around with that as well. Real subtle changes here, but changes nonetheless to sort of brighten things up. All right, now what I want to do at this point is play around with this solid color back here. So with this, with this I can double click right here. And now you can maybe click here. I want something dark. I'll click right in here. I can slide through here and I can see what happens if I change that color to get a different look. It really all depends on what kind of, it's almost like an inked look. Uh, it depends on what kind of inked look you want. I like that blue, but I do also like this sort of uh, rich, deep red deep red or deep blue, just a little bit of that color in there I think is kind of nice. I think I'll go back to red. But you can play around with this. You can try on different colors, brighter colors, more saturated colors. Just click around in here and then slide through this pillar of color. And when you're done, press OK. All right, we're going to finish this off. One final thing. I'm going to go back to the geisha. And I'm going to put her in a group by pressing Command or Control G. You can do that with Layer, New, group from layers as well. I'm going to put her into a group right here. And I'm going to add a mask to the group. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want the effect of, of the geisha here, or actually not the effect, but I want her to actually fade from transparent at the bottom to opaque at the top. So I'm going to go to the gradient tool right here. I'm going to set my gradient to foreground to transparent. I've got black in the foreground, that's great. And then I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to slide from here up to here. And you see that way you can fade out. Let's just go a longer distance and just show you what happens. You can fade out your subject. And really it's that foot right there that I want to get rid of more than anything. So I'm just going to go right up into here like that. So I get this effect. And you can choose to do that or not, depending on what look you're after. But let me zoom this up a little bit so you can really see here. We have this beautiful sort of splatter or inked effect happening. It's cutting the border for the geisha. Obviously, you could spend a little more time if you wanted trying to cut it um, exactly the way you want it. But it gives you an opportunity as a photographer to step into the world of a painter and create something that has an absolutely lovely, organic, painterly look. So. That's it for today's workbench. Thank you so much for being with me. Uh, have a wonderful day, and um, if you can, find a few minutes, make a few minutes for your own creativity. Take care.